Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ozpol Explained. I'm your host in his late 20s, David, and today I'll be discussing something really important. The difference between federal, state and local government. Why do we have all these different levels of government? When the British came over to Australia, they were really impressed and were like, wow, this is so much land. It's ours now. Time to steal it. And then they set up a bunch of separate colonies all across the continent. These colonies needed structure and government, so state governments were formed. And then borders were established between the colonies. So Victoria had its own parliament and laws and New South Wales had its own parliament and laws. And then the state governments were like, hey, what if we made like a separate tier of government to deal with like local infrastructure issues? So like, we don't have to have all this responsibility. We don't need to micromanage. Someone else can do that. And then they created local councils. Then in the 1890s, people were like, what if we came together and became united as one big commonwealth? What if we created a federal government, but keep individual state parliaments? And also get rid of interstate tariffs. Those are annoying. And then there was a lot of referendums and conferences and long story short, the federal constitution was written and that is how we got the federal government. So you may have heard of Federation Day, which is on January 1st, 1901. Before then, there was no federal government in Australia. How are the tiers of government formed? At the very top is the monarchy. As of this video, that's Queen Elizabeth II because we are not a republic. Good old Lizzie conventionally does very little and just sort of lets Australian parliament run the show. However, there are several key people who are appointed by her as representatives of the monarchy and they are very important. So the Queen appoints the Governor General to do all the duties that she could hypothetically do herself, but like doesn't, like because such as giving royal assent to bills, which is just a fancy way of saying approval to become law. So Parliament passes a law and then hands it to the Governor General and the Governor General is like, it's law now. Sick, sweet. You may have learned this earlier in part one. The queen also appoints governors, which do the same, but for states. The queen can choose these people, but again, long ago has decided just to let us pick and be like, you take care of it. So the head of government makes a recommendation to the queen and she's like, I'm super old. I don't care, go for it, whatever. Ah, you know how the queen is. So for example, the head of government on the federal level is the Prime Minister, who recommends someone to be Governor General. The head of a state government is the Premier, who recommends someone to become Governor. Most territories don't actually have parliaments, which is something that I go into detail in a much longer video about the difference between states and territories, so check that out. Basically, the Northern Territory and the Australian Capital Territory have chief ministers, and the other eight are just too small for their own parliament they don't get a governor because they are under the administration of the federal government. And then there's also local government. They don't have appointees by the queen. Federally, government is formed in the House of Representatives. In states and territories, it's called the Legislative Assembly or House of Assembly in Tasmania and South Australia. And local governments don't have parliaments, so that makes it a little bit simpler. The head is either the mayor or the shire president or the Lord Mayor, if you're in like a big capital city. Okay, now I've determined all the different levels of government and how they have like head honchos and whatnot. What do they do? So the responsibilities of the different levels of government sometimes cross over and sometimes they're exclusive. The federal government deals with a lot of big issue things like immigration, citizenship, marriage, the military, the census, pensions, lighthouses, foreign affairs, postal service, and more. You can find a list of things that are their responsibility in section 51 of the Australian Federal Constitution. As you can tell by the list, these are things that affect the entire nation because if it weren't for laws about lighthouses, oh, where would we be? Some of this may sound familiar from my previous video about the constitution. Some things are exclusively just for the federal government, whereas some things are given both to states and federal. For example, taxes. The federal government deals with things like income tax, whereas states get things like stamp duty, which is a kind of tax due with the purchase of property. State governments can make whatever laws they want, 
within the limits of both their constitution and the federal constitution. States can't make their own military, however, they do have some responsibilities, like consumer affairs, state police forces, industrial relations, sport and recreation, prisons, emergency services, health, education, public transport, and roads. Fun fact, we do have an Australian federal police, but that didn't exist until 1917, when then Prime Minister Billy Hughes was addressing a crowd and he got egged by a protester. He got so mad, he created a whole new police force. That is a true fact. It's called the Warwick Egg Throwing Incident, and you should give it a quick Google. Local councils are naturally a little bit more focused on the specifics of local areas. So they deal with things like local road maintenance, picking up rubbish, building regulations, pet control, libraries, footpaths, community services, town planning, and recreational facilities. So to put it into perspective, right, if you move to a new suburb, you check with your council to know when your bin day is. When you move to a new state, you get a different transport card for public transport. And if you leave the country to commit war crimes, the federal government is the one that has to deal with you. So as you can see, responsibilities are a little bit different. Like I said, there is some crossover in these duties. One of these duties is health. Let's talk about that right now. The federal government runs Medicare, which is the public health system that allows you to go to bulk billing doctors for free or very little. The federal government has the most tax powers and the most revenue, and so therefore it can give grants to state governments who then run hospitals. States also provide some of their own budget to hospitals. It's also up to then the state and local government to share the responsibility of managing public hospitals, community and mental health services, and food safety and handling regulation. So as you can see, all three layers of government work together in handling the public health system. Like a nice delicious cake, or I don't know, some other metaphor, like an onion or an ogre, I don't know. There's layers. There's, the layers is the main thing here. Together they all work to take care of different parts of running and maintaining the country from nationwide issues down to making sure the street signs in your area are maintained. And there you have it, a quick introduction and explainer to the different parts of government in Australia. I hope you learned something. If you haven't watched the rest of the series of the basics of government, go watch it now. Subscribe if you would like to learn more. Comment down below what you would like to learn about next. And I hope this has helped you understand more about the Australian political system. Thank you so much for watching. And also, hey, if you feel like it, you could support me on Patreon. That is something that I would be incredibly grateful for if you can. Anyway, I will see you next time when I talk about the different political parties of Australia.